Literally, if I'm not mistaken, I think I almost left the house every day this week, which is dope. I think maybe except Tuesday, I want to say. I don't think I left the house Tuesday. But every day was progressive. Yes, my therapist would be very proud of me. <laughs> the only thing I suck at is journaling. Like, do you guys suck at journaling? Like, I feel like. If you journal every day, shout outs to you. Like, journaling is so hard. Like, I feel like when I'm told, like, like when I tell myself, like, okay, I'm going to start journaling, I'll do it for maybe three days, and that's it. Like, it's so hard to journal every day. I don't know why. And I'll be like, oh, I'll look at my journal and be like, oh, I should write in that. <laughs> maybe I should write in that. And then I won't do it. So I don't know. Why is journaling so hard? Like, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with it. And sometimes my hands be hurting. What I need to do though, because sometimes I be trying to be like aesthetically pleasing. Like I'll be like sitting on the couch journaling. But I think I'm the type of person who needs to sit up and journal. Cause like when I write, it kind of like strains my hand. So yeah. <laughs> Not turning journaling into a medical situation. But, um, yeah, I left the house virtually every day. I can't remember exactly everything I did. I know one day I went to the supermarket. One day me and Femi went to the park and we went out to eat at this place called The Bedford. And the food was actually, like, really good. Um, I want to go back there, actually. Um, they had this, like, soft shell crab, um burger and it's like basically like a soft shell crab on the burger like google it if you google a picture like it looks crazy so i was like scared to eat it but now i regret like not eating it so i'm gonna go back there and then i also want to go back to um what's this place i mean not back and then they have a mac and cheese burger and it's just i thought it was gonna be a burger with mac and cheese on it so that's why i didn't get it but it's actually just dead ass a mac and cheese burger that sounds like gonna make my stomach hurt but I want to try it. <laughs> so, yeah, we did that. What did I do Thursday? I did something Thursday and Friday, too. I left the house. I just know that. I'm dead serious. I just know I left the house. Oh, I had took out my hair. Then I took my oh, I took out my hair, obviously. This braid is so long. Y'all should see it. I was like, well, if I'm going to do my hair for the low, you feel me? I might as well make sure it's a long Rapunzel braid or whatever. Yeah, I took my hair. I was getting tired of my hair. Like, I'm about to learn how to do some damn knotless braids. Like, for real. Like, I'm really about to learn because I don't know what it is, but my hair's been getting messed up way quicker. I don't know if it's growing faster. I did. Well, the thing is, like, I've been like wanting to really, really grow my natural hair, like, out. Like, it's it's long, but I want it long. You feel me? And, um, so I was like, like, I'll ask, like, you know, I don't feel like my hair is growing as fast as I would, would like it to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want it to grow, like, faster. And, um, this girl recommended me to oil my scalp every, every day, even with the braids in it. And I did do that, but it was a lot of product builds up. If y'all know, I was a little fake natural hair connoisseur prior to Brit Says the podcast. So, um, yeah. So, when you oil your hair every day, it's going to produce pilot buildup. And sure enough, it did that shit. But I also feel like it did help my hair grow faster as well. Because my hair was, like, frizzy in the roots. Like, frizzy. But, yeah. Like, my hair used to last two months. Now it's only lasting one month. And I'm, I'm going to be transparent. Knotless braids cost $250 to $275. 
That's damn near three hundred dollars. I don't do three hundred dollar hairstyles for one month. Some of y'all girls give it up like that. Y'all be changing your hair every two weeks, and that's cute for you, but it's not cute for me. When I get box braids, I expect them just to last two months. Shit, back in my day, back in my prime. My braids used to last me three months. I ain't even capping. Like, I could keep box braids in my hair for three months. Now, it's not even manageable. But now, it gets so frizzy and so bad that I can't even really gel my edges. Like, I be trying to put mousse on it, and it still just be looking jacked up. So, I just took that shit out. But I'm like, going forth, I'm really going to learn how to do braids. Like, I want to know how to braid my own hair. Like, that shit is too much money. I could do so much... With $300, like, dead ass. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, no, I'm dead ass. I had learned how to do box braids, the ones with the knots in it. But, you know, that's off trend now. But I'm about to, yo. I'm going to teach myself how to do braids. Like, these hairstyles are cute. But they're, um... What's the word I'm think of, thinking of? It's not, it's not long-term. I like long-term hairstyles, preferably. So... I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Um, but yeah, and I'm supposed to get my hair done too soon. That's another story, but I don't want to get into that. Then, moving on, after that, I went to my friend Keisha. She had a hair show. I missed the hair show, channel, But I did still get to see her, and I got to uh, eat with her friends. And Kefele and this guy named, I don't, should I be telling you business? Kefele is actually somebody who's like known in that natural community. He does lock hair styles and stuff. And it was another model there or whatever. I don't want to say who name because I don't know if they want their business out there. And that was so much fun. And not only that day did she have a hair show. It was Juneteenth, by the way, that day. So this happened on Saturday. Um... They had, like, a whole bunch of festivities going on, child. Juneteenth was fucking crazy. I was so much traffic, like, trying to get there. It was people just doing stuff. I'm like, damn, I need to do something next year, too. Like, Juneteenth was insane. And I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. We went to Applebee's. We was chatting up. It was so many different conversations. And it was just a good time. And then, after that, my friend... Raquel's her birthday is Tuesday, but she got an Airbnb and I had went to go visit her. And oh my gosh, this Airbnb was so fucking nice. Like, girl. Oh my gosh. Shout out to Airbnb. Cause I remember when Keisha had an Airbnb for her birthday. Her Airbnb was really nice. But I've been hearing people saying Airbnbs be Airbnbs be looking janky. But apparently. It's all about how much you pay for it, bitch. You're going to get what you pay for. But, um, yeah, her Airbnb is mad nice. Went there, got to catch up with her. I haven't seen her in so long. I don't even remember the last time I had seen Raquel. We just, like, due to COVID and everything else. And then I saw my other friend, Nicole. We were actually all roommates. So it was me, Nicole, Raquel, and this other girl, Sydney. And we were all roommates. So it was like a, like, a roommate reunion type shit or whatever and we was just talking about buff state college days and all that good stuff so yeah it was a lot of catching up i'm feeling very summertime like feeling very it's really making me feel like okay things are really going back to normal like even i say my brother hit me up i'm like and he was like oh Brittany, i'm gonna come over there like last week and he um, had asked me, he had, he was like, uh, Brittany, I'm in the area, I can come stop by, but I was at home. And I was just thinking, damn, now I gotta start keeping the house clean, bitch. That's when you know the world opened up, when people just feel comfortable, just come to your spot and shit. I'm like, damn, now I gotta start keeping my house clean and shit. <laughs> my house don't be dirty, but it don't be to my expectations for company. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, now I gotta start making sure shit on point. People might want to do pull-ups and pop-ups and drip drops and drip drops. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's been crazy. It's definitely been crazy and it's been a great week. A lot of other shit be popping on. Me and my husband, we been getting into a bitch. He be getting on my fucking nerves. But I want him to come on the podcast. He says that he's not interested, but I think he is a little bit like this much. 
Because I think we could definitely have, like, a very interesting podcast episode. Like, I do want to kind of wait because there's, like, a lot of events happening. And I want us to be able to, like, talk about those things as well. When we're more, I don't want to say knowledgeable, but when we're more experienced. Like, I want us to talk about certain stuff, like, full-fledged. So, that might be coming soon. Not soon, soon. I shouldn't even say soon. Like... But give give me give me some time. Give me some time. Um and what's been going on in the media this week? So one of the top things I saw was like uh the Lala Anthony and Carmelo Anthony incident. And um I just I don't like it. <laughs> like my thing is is like when guys go out and they decide to cheat. Why do you not put on a condom? I'm not advocating cheating because I know how that could get problematic, even that statement. But it's just like, it's the disrespect for me. And then I totally forgot he had another baby on her prior. And I think that's another reason why like women stay after like men cheat on them and have kids, kids on them and stuff. Because I think they feel like eventually people will forget and like they're still the main one, which is kind of true because honestly, that's not the first time that that's happened. Like even like in like my personal life, not my current life, not me and family, but like in my family circle, like I remember my mother was like telling me like, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. I had a baby on this person and that person. And I knew these things, but I forgot about them because you don't see the other mother. You don't see the other kid. Like you mostly see that first mother. So it's like, you kind of forget like, oh yeah, I forgot he got another kid. You know what I'm talking about? Like, so I think that's another reason why like women stay. Like even like, uh, is this Dwayne Wade? Dwayne Wade allegedly had a baby on Gabrielle Union, if I'm not mistaken. And like, we don't even think about that shit. Like at all. We dead don't think about that shit. Is it? Yeah. I think he had a side baby on her. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, no. It's not called a side baby. It's called a, um, a break baby. When you take a break and the guy has a baby on you during the break type shit. I don't like that. Cause I feel like you just, you just, you crossing it. Like have respect, like have some respect, you know? And now Lala is finally leaving Carmelo. I was surprised she didn't leave him anytime soon. I heard they was just dragging on the marriage, honestly, but I was surprised she didn't leave him soon. Cause you know, and that's the thing. It doesn't looks don't matter these things. Cause I was going to say, she seemed like the type that could just get a man like this, like mad quick. But, um, you know, I guess those things don't matter. They don't mean much. Um, it, it's just, it's like, it is what it is. Bitch. Like, I don't know. I was just shocked that she hadn't left. She was giving me single vibes anyway. We don't know why they decided to stay together. Nobody knows really for sure. But um, it's just unfortunate. And I think it's very slept under the rug how cheating could be so impactful. And how it could really not only just hurt a relationship, but just fuck with people's mental health. It fucks with you spiritually. Like... When I see this thing, I be dead praying for the family because I know it can be stressful. Like, it's not funny. Like, the shit is not a joke, my nigga. Like, like you you playing with people's livelihood, you know? People get married and they start families and then the husband decides to step out or the wife. It's a lot. It can be a lot. So, you know, prayers to that family, bitch. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I wasn't shocked. But I was just like, damn, he had twins and then he's secretly trying to like, and this is my thing. Why y'all want that stress? Like, man, but like you, you like being stressed. That shit don't stress you out. Having secret kids and shit. Life already stressful. You want to add more stress to that shit? When you cheat, you're, you're fucking up your household. Now you got other kids. Kids is expensive, bitch. You're doing too much. It's too much. It's too much. Life is fucking hard. Why make the shit harder? Like, think about that. Like, I already know, like, when he was even cheating before he got the girl pregnant, it was shaking up his motherfucking house. Like, y'all like that shaky shit? Like, without cheating, life is hard. You want to make that shit harder? Why? 
Like, I understand, you know, sex is good. I can imagine for men, it's amazing. But relax. Like, you're doing too much. Like, for real. Like, dead ass. Like, that should be blowing my fucking eye. Like, for real. Like, I don't know. I, I'll never get the, I, the, the the mind of a man. Like, it's, it's not my job to... But, yeah. It was one of the only, like, hot button topics I was kind of like, sheesh. Like, that was a bit much. Like, it, it didn't throw me off, but it was just like, that's a bit much. But, um, yeah, I've been trying to stay positive, stay in the know, stay in a clear mind. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That's what I did Thursday, too. <laughs> Random. Thursday, I went to, I used to work with him. I was his manager, his visual manager at Forever 21. Khalil, the artist, definitely follow him on Instagram. I'll tag him in the description box below. He draws like fashion illustrations and stuff like that. So I had one to, he has like, um, he's selling some of his artwork at this store called Jill Lin Lindsay in Brooklyn. And so he had like a viewing, like a showing of his artwork and stuff like that. So I purchased one. Actually, where is it? I want to hang it up. I can't find the damn hammer to hammer a nail in the damn wall so I can hang up the, pen the painting. But I did that one Thursday. So I did a lot this week. So I'm really, really proud of myself. This is a damn shame, bitch. I'm telling you. So yeah, that was dope. And that kind of leans into the topic today. It's just about like meeting people, engaging with people. Like, in your 30s and just being older and meeting people in general, like, making friends, engaging with people, dating, all of the above. Because, um, I just feel like lately, for me at least, um, people been kind of dope. Like, for real. Like, dead ass. Like, when I go places, like, I'll engage with people and I notice that, you know... People are really great conversationists these days. Like, I'm like, is it me? Am I getting better at conversating? Or just people are just dope as fuck or whatever. And I was just thinking, like, for instance, too, like, today, like when I said that on um, Saturday, when I went out with Keisha, I met her two friends. And I was like, dang, we have a really good combo. When I went to Khalil's showing... I met people and I had went by myself and I met his brother and sister-in-law and we was having dope ass conversation. And then I remember like a while back, my cousin had came to my house. She was in Brooklyn to meet one of her friends that live in Brooklyn. Then I went to her, um, her friend invited us over to the house. Like, oh, you guys want to come upstairs so we can talk in the house. And then we was talking and the conversation was lit. So I was like, damn, I feel like lately, I wonder, is it like a thing with like age, like where people are just better conversationists? Like, I feel like growing up, like sometimes I would get around people and the energy just wasn't there. Like, believe it or not, I know like if you was this podcast, you think like, oh, people probably always like Britney. Like, no, sometimes niggas that don't like me. Or just the energy be off, people energy be weird, people be too much, people just don't know how to hold a conversation. Or I'm thinking like, is it a thing where like, I'm just hanging around the right people or I don't know. Or is it just an age thing? Is it because of COVID? Like I'm like, are people starting to really expand their minds ha 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 expand your mind like i feel like people really be holding conversations like i be dead learning things from other people like for real i think too like doing a podcast has like taught me to be like a really good listener as well i don't think i was always a bad listener did i use i feel like sometimes i've used to talk over people but for the most part i'm a really good listener i don't mind listening at all like so that's one of the other things too. So like even now too, sometimes I'll be feeling bad. Like when I'm like, when people is talking and I'm like looking at them, I wonder if they like, is she like not listening? Does she think I'm annoying? Like, no, I'm dead ass listening to you. And I'm just trying to like fully grasp everything that you're saying. So yeah, I was just thinking like, damn, lately, like I literally run into new people and people dead be a vibe. And I think three times is a lot. 
<laughs> so I was just thinking like, is it that, like I said, during the pandemic, we were home alone and we just started to want to like educate ourselves on stuff. Cause I remember I even said that in one of the episodes, like about how like we're now fully like educating ourselves on topics that we never educated ourselves on. So I feel like people just have expanded their mind and they don't mind holding conversations and talking about things and learning new things and things of that nature. But, um, also too with dating, I'm not dating, but, um, I was talking to my friend she was like, you know, I'm thinking about getting on the apps, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, girl, do it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, one thing I did enjoy when I was like dating and I was on dating apps was like meeting new people, like dead ass. Like, even if I knew this relationship or whatever, whatever the fuck we got going on was going to go nowhere, it was still fun to eat, to listen to people's views like just just deal with people like i was saying one time i was talking to like this nigga he was like a whole fucking narcissist like he he was like a flight attendant and he was telling me like yeah one time i flown one of the most expensive flights ever like nigga you flew it but you didn't pay for it like you got it for free but he was just he just kept talking about himself like he was so full of himself but the stories was kind of interesting even though he was full of himself and, um, I don't know. I just, I just enjoyed talking to people too at the time. And, um, that's how I was telling her, like, yeah, definitely get on the dating apps. And like, even like people that I hang around that's on dating apps and stuff and they still do it. I'll be like living vicariously through them because I enjoy like just hearing their dating stories. I know for them, this shit be stressful. <laughs> they probably like, bitch, it's not funny. I'm stressed the fuck out and you are laughing at my demise. But... I just love it. I just love um, experience people engaging. I just think it's dope. I think it's dope as fuck. Purr. And um, I say that all to say, like, I feel like a lot of times, it's not often discussed, but there is a market for people who just don't have friends and things like that. And they want friends and they want friendships. Though, like two episodes ago, we talk about, you know, looser friendships some people want to gain them. You know, some people want friends. They want um, support systems. Like I said, they say um, people with friends are generally happier. I think right now is the best time to make friends and get into relationships. Now, I don't want to talk too much about, too much about, you know, dating because I wouldn't know because I heard that it's still scary out here, respectfully. But I think definitely this is the time not to be shy. Definitely be a conversationist and just like make friends if you want that. And there's people who want that because I know there's a lot of people who have friends and they already played the friend game in high school and college and schooling and work and this and that. And they're just like, bitch, I don't need no more friends. But it's some people out there who actually want friends or some people who have friends and they want new friends because, you know, a lot of people's friends, especially like our age, they're having kids, they're getting married. And believe it or not, it's some people who may not want to have kids, who may not want to get married or things like that. Like they still want to travel. Maybe they don't want to have kids until they're 35. You don't fucking know. Or, or 40 shit. Maybe they saving their eggs. Like you don't know. So a lot of people, unfortunately... Their friends ain't on that type of time. Like, they don't have to find a babysitter. They got to deal with their husband. They got fucking bills. They got, they saving up for a house, bitch. They saving up for a new car. But you still kind of, like, want to thrive and travel. And guess what? There's ways to, you know, really put yourself out there and make new friendships. And find people who want to travel, who want to do the things you do, who want it, who are dating. And you can gallivant with them and talk about your single dating life and or have political debates and shit like that. Like maybe I'm, you know, sometimes I have friends who could stand in a political discussion, who could have discussions that thrive in any topic. But then you got friends who really just don't get on that way. They can't talk politics. They can't talk, you know, racial injustice. They they're they're not built for those type of conversations. They don't want to get into it. Or maybe you're very spiritual or you're you're like me for instance i know my friends like i have like 
uh, I, I'm often running to a lot of people that are really spiritual. When I say spiritual, I mean like they into the retrograde, like they into the astrology, the numbers, the spirits, the souls, the witches, the, the tarot cards and shit. I'm not into that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not fully into it. The other day I did give me a stone or whatever. And I actually had to pick what I wanted to stand for, the clear courts. But, um, and can I fully hold a conversation on astrology and numbers and tarot cards? Is that something I even want to play with, bitch? No, it's not. But I know that it, there is a market for that. Like, there is people who love that shit. And, like, they when they get in their bag, they get in their bag. Like, speaking of Raquel and Keisha, look at the eyes. I know that both of them are really good when it comes to that. Because I remember they came to my house, they were, like, really getting into it. Like, I was like, this is interesting. Like, I could listen to something that I'm not fully into and really get excited about it. Because I like learning about things. But um, maybe you want a friend who could get in a spiritual bag with you. And, and y'all could fucking collect rocks together, bitch. I don't fucking know. So, I see why, in some ways, making friends... At an older age, maybe necessary. You know what I'm saying? Like, some people, like, I remember I used to be like that. Like, I don't want to make friends anymore. I have enough friends. And I still do feel that way. You know, I do have enough friends. I, 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 I like, even when I go to work, I can be, like, a little, I'm, I'm like, chatty, but a little standoffish. Because I don't ever want to get too close with people to the point that they feel like we need to be friends. We need to hang out outside of work. No, we don't. We only connect here. If me and you connect outside of work, then you was a bop. You was a bop. Like, that type of shit. But, um, so I understand that connecting with people is a thing. I think also, too, now that I've been, like, connecting with people, are we close friends? No. Uh, uh, like, in these spaces, did I make, like, these tight, close friendships? No. But would I hang out with these people again? Damn right. If, if I was asked to, sure. Why not? Um. Did I see the value in these conversations? Yeah. I do uh, enjoy a good connection or a good conversation. And um, I think there's some value and some importance in really just connecting with people and getting to know people, even if it's not a long-term friendship or whatever the case may be. So, you know, before most topics, what do we like to do? We like to expand our Mind. Expand your mind, expand your mind, expand your mind. Okay, so for this expand your mind, I decided to pick two topics. Well, two articles because I talk about today not just making friends, but dating, I guess. So I was like, let me do one for dating and making friends. I tried to find one that was uh, full spectrum about just relationships, but you know, it's never that easy. <laughs> so I'll read the first one, which is about friendships. And it's called, no one ever tell you how to make friends in your thirties. Oh, and this article is written on Whitney Dunlap F dot medium dot com written by Whitney Dunlap. So, it says, they don't tell you when you're a child that making new friends stops being a possibility as you age. As children, friends just come naturally as we exist in planned circles of like individuals. Forced to socialize with our parents, encouraging us to say hello, say our names, and to tell people how old we are. It's all very easy when someone is delivering communication prompts to you as you hide behind their legs and suck on your fingers as a means of comfort. Eventually, as we progress in school and get jobs, we learn the natural cadences and rhythms of socializing and can create new connections all on our own. However, these connections are still often created in controlled environments until at least the age of 25. If we are lucky, the connections we make within that time frame last for the rest of our lives, but this often isn't the case as things change, people change, and our friendships needs change. No one ever tells you how to make friends in your 30s. There's an unspoken expectation that you'll just manage and figure it out. 
I learned at an early age that I preferred a smaller group of friends, which I maintained, and was fiercely loyal to even after going away to a different college. So when I moved away from Virginia at age 23 on my own, I assumed that this friendship, friendship group and a sense of home was all that I'd ever need on my journey into the next phase of life. So I don't want to read too much because I have two articles to read. <laughs> the next article is on, wait, purewild.com. It says 10 reasons dating in your 30s is better than dating in your 20s. Oh, 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 oh. Written by Carolyn Kwong, Chen Stanley. No one would dispute that dating in your 20s has its perks. Maybe you have more single friends or your social life includes more low-key house parties and barbecues that lend themselves to meeting people. You definitely have a better ability to recover from one too many margaritas, that's for certain. But spoiler alert, there's a whole lot to look forward to if you find yourself single in your third decade. To prove it, I polled real women and drew from my own experience to sum up why they in your 30s is actually pretty great. One, you have a better idea of what you want. That's true. I'm going to just read what they are. Two, and you're more comfortable asking for what you want. Three, you've learned from your mistakes. That's a fact. Four, you know not to waste time on so-so situations. Five, you probably have more disposable income. Not with COVID, bitch. Your value, you value your own time more. Seven, you're not going to find a partner just for the sake of it. Eight, you have more life experience and more stories. Nine, you're getting the new and improved version of your dating prospects. Things move more quickly if you want them to. I agree. Let me talk about the relationship part. Even though, you know, I am whole married. I agree. Like, if anything was to ever happen with me and Femi, like, I, I, my expectations would be extremely high. Like, I know it would, it would be a very stressful to date me. Because once you... And then, you grown as fuck. Like, a lot of the shit you was doing in your 20s, you not finna do in your 30s. Or in your 40s or 50s and 60s, bitch. Like, I would hope, you know... I think your expectations are extremely high. A lot of, I would think for some who are dating as they're older, they're looking to start families. They're looking to build. Like, in your 20s, if shit fuck up, you're like, whatever, I can find a new nigga. Right now, it's not like that. And I think even too with men, they be on the same type of time. Some of them, you know, I would think. So I would say a lot of that makes sense because in a lot of time people don't got time to waste when you older. Like, yeah, yeah, your patience level is short. You get tired faster, bitch. Your knees is getting fucked up. Your back is fucked up. Your eyes is getting fucked up. Everything get fucked up. You ain't really got time to be playing the kiki, ha, ha, hoo, hoo with niggas. And I'm sure, quite sure men don't got time to play with the little girls either. So I would think, yes, definitely then in your 30s should come with some perks. And that's, that, that's just a growth thing. If you haven't fully grown and mature, then, yeah, dating for you would suck right now. As it pertains to making friends in your 30s, I would especially think it would be harder, not even just in your 30s, even in your 20s to, you know, make new friendships but i think it's still very possible and like i said i think it's just about connecting and bonding i don't think it's something you can do like dating though where you could just go to people and start talking to them like let's be honest it's mad weird like if a girl just comes to me and just start like talking to me randomly with no realm or reason behind it yes i would find it very odd um i think meeting people too is just about like doing activities and stuff like that like they have stuff like meet up i was just um telling my friends about how they have this thing called black girls travel where you could like travel with different people going to events and stuff like you could just meet people work is a place a good place to make friends too if you want um engaging you know with family your family can introduce you to this person to this person to this person to this person and going to events like most of the time you know with me it's like just being social 
is how you kind of connect with people. And also too, yeah, now that you've connected, just be yourself, flow into conversations easily. Like don't overthink anything. Don't overthink any topics and things like that, you know. That's what I do too. And I think too, people have to learn to be a good listener because one thing people don't like is like, especially with friendships and dating is like, if you're dating someone and they want to hear themselves talk, 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 but they don't never want to listen. So show that you're also a good listener. We all need a hearing ear sometimes because one thing too that needs to be discussed is like, yeah, you're dating in your thirties, you're making friends in your thirties and some, you're going to need a support system. Life is going to get harder and bigger challenges are going to come as you get older because, you know, your parents is getting old. Your body is deteriorating. <laughs> oh, Lord. Like, a lot of crazy shit be popping off. Like, so, in those instances, you know, your partner, your friends and stuff, they're your support system. So, you need to make sure that you're showing that. You can be a good friend. You can be a good support system and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not easy. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it's doable. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I enjoyed the article, you know, discussing about how, like, dating in your 30s would be one of the best things. And I agree with that. I feel that. You just know yourself way better. And I feel like people are more mature as well um, when it comes to dating. As you get older, we all really kind of preferably know what exactly it is that we want. I would hope. Like, I wonder, I hope it's not people out here really just, like, not knowing what it is they want. But sometimes it happens because, like, I know, like, sometimes people, like, what do you want to do career-wise, right? Like, I know I'm on a pod, like, but I know, like, sometimes it's hard to answer the question. And I know that some people feel like we should know certain things by now. And sometimes we don't know specifically what we want by now and things like that. So (laughs) maybe I shouldn't be so hard on people if they don't know exactly what it is or who they want to date, what they want in a man and or a woman and things like that. So I guess, I guess, as it pertains to friends, like I said, a lot of people don't have friends. And I think we kind of mean to people like, you don't got no friend, fuck you. But it's not cool. It's not funny. Um, I think, like I said, you can definitely make friends. It's mad ways to make friends. And I think too, like when it comes to making friends, like don't do the most because then... It gets weird, you know. You don't want to end up... The thing, the bad thing, too, with making friends with you older, I don't know. This is an opinion. This is a podcast. can be opinion-based. Sometimes making friends could be like dating, and you could make a friend who has ulterior motives. They might see vulnerability in you, and they might try to use you for your money and things like that, or just use you for your time and your energy. Some people are like that. Like, people are fucking nuts. Like, some people don't even need your money. They just like having you around and having your time and energy. Like, dead ass. They're like, oh, this person is soft. I could just use them to to complain to everything about. Like, some people want that space. Like, they want somebody where they could just go to and rent. Like, I need a rent, a friend that I can only rant to. I don't want to hear their bullshit. Or I, uh, this person is vulnerable. Like, any and everything I want them to do, they're going to do it. This person has low self-esteem. So, you know, be careful with friends. I, like I say, I think friendships are very slept on when it comes to, you know, just nasty behaviors and using people. It's very underrated. Like, I feel like it's talked about, but it's not something that people think about often. Like, I feel like, like, I feel like if somebody was to try to, like, make a friend today, they wouldn't think about, like, oh, this person couldn't hurt me. 
Like, I feel like with love, a lot of people know love is a risk. Like, oh, this person might cheat on me. This person might be crazy. This person might be abusive. This person might be X, Y, and Z. Like, we all say it. Like, even when I talk to my friends or whatever, they like, oh, I'm scared of date. This motherfucker might be crazy. Da, 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 da. But if somebody was to go out and make a friend today, they would be like, this friend might be, this person might be crazy. Because they thinking like, oh, we just going to be friends. Like, it's just a friendship. Like, I could do that shit. But no, you know, making a friend and a friend fucks you over or does some grimy shit or does some crazy shit that shit fucks with your head and your spirit and your mental dead ass so you know be careful who you keeping around you too or you make friends too shit niggas might line you up you make a fake ass friend they come rob your fucking house bitch so yeah be careful be very careful tread very lightly you know, get to learn these people's background. Treat it as if you're dating. If you're out here trying to make friends, treat that shit as if you're on a fucking dating app. Like, you're dating. Like, dead ass. Like, just get to know them. Only hang with them outside. Don't be inviting motherfuckers to your house. And all that shit. Just, you know, get to know people. Get to know people. Because, um... Making friends and hanging around wrong circles, hanging around negativity is definitely a thing. Hanging around people that love drama and problematics, even at the age of 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, is a very real thing. And so, if you're out here and you want to make new friends and you want to build friendships and you want to network or whatever reason you want to bring new people into your life, be very mindful of who you bring bringing into your life, not just in a dating aspect, but even on a social aspect. You have to be very careful of what type of people and energy and vibes you're bringing around you. You don't have to build long-term relationships. Yes, I've, meet, I've met people and I've had great conversations with them, but do I know who they'll be in the next 5 to 10, 30 business days? No, I don't. So I tread lightly and so should you. <laughs> So, yeah, I think this episode is a little short. I'm not sure because I had to do a lot of editing. But, yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a little short, but it was a little good, per usual. If you are here watching right now, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button if you're watching on YouTube. If you're streaming on the TSP, make sure you leave a review and give me five stars. Make sure you follow me on Instagram on the score for Instagram. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.